I'm sure you've heard the saying that nothing lasts forever, and that's definitely true when it comes to airsoft guns. No matter how much money you got sunk into it, or even what brand it is, sooner or later, it's gonna let you down, and you're gonna need to do either some sort of maintenance to it, or just general repair work. Now, last week we did a basic troubleshooting video on working with airsoft guns, so we went through all of the basic components on the exterior of the gun. So, we checked the battery, the fuse, the connections, the motor, the motor height, and all of those things were correct and the gun still wouldn't work. So the problem is something inside of the gearbox. Now before you get into that, I'd like to at least give you the disclaimer that once you start going beyond this and opening up gearboxes, this is the part that most people get themselves into trouble with because you either need to have some kind of experience in working with gearboxes or just a certain level of uh, confidence that you're going to be able to put it back together because we probably get one or two of these a month where somebody takes a gearbox apart and can't figure out how to get all the parts back together and uh, gets themselves into trouble so look at the bright side if that happens to you the thing was broken anyway and it needs to be fixed so at least you got us to the point where we need to put it back together and if that does happen to you save all the parts box it up bring it to us we know what we're doing we can get you back up and running so don't panic if that happens but for those of you that are not faint of heart or that are ready to go into it we're going to get into some troubleshooting for the internal parts of the gearbox so, like I said earlier, we're not going to go into a grave amount of detail on how to remove the gearbox from the guns, and suffice it to say that every gun is a little bit different from manufacturer to manufacturer, so you may have to do a little bit of research on your own on how to remove the gearbox from the gun. Um, that's one of the great things about YouTube is there's uh, just a ton of information that's out there. I would just make sure you're able to uh, back up whatever information you've learned from watching one video, make sure there's at least two sources for information because there are a couple of videos out there that I've seen in the past that had just plain wrong information. So make sure you can at least back up what the guy's telling you to do before you get yourself into a lot of trouble. Um, but there's a lot of good information out there and it's amazing the amount of things that you can learn from watching people in really poorly lit videos um, that actually do have good information on it. So just, just double check before you start jumping into anything. It's important before we get too far to mention that the guns that we're going to be talking about today are going to be primarily Tokyo Marui style gearboxes, which are probably the most popular that are out there. There are other brands, like this particular one is an Ares, and there's also uh, Elite Force that use a very unique style trigger box or trigger switch system in it. So it's one good thing to consider when you're buying a gun is the compatibility factor because some of these, they're nearly impossible to get replacement triggers for them if you have a problem for it where the Tokyo Marui compatibles are much more uh, are compatible with aftermarket parts and uh, just general replacement parts. I have to say the Elite Force brand, I've had zero luck with getting replacement parts from them and they unfortunately don't give a lot in the way of customer service unfortunately so that should be an important consideration uh, if you're just in the process of buying a gun but just so you know for the video today we are dealing primarily with the Tokyo Marui. Now I will give you one word of warning for guys that have not done this in the past that probably the thing that gets most people into trouble when they're doing this is just initially opening up the gearbox because there's a lot of springs under tension and what happens is they go to rip the gearbox open and all the springs just blow out of the thing. So um, the easiest way to get away from that is to put some sort of uh, rod through where the spring is in the their housing in the back of it to hold the uh, spring guide in place and just slowly separate the two halves of the gearbox and then release the spring tension makes it a lot easier and keeps everything from flying out of the gearbox so that's one little pointer that I'll give you if you're just getting into this alright so for the sake of being able to see what we're doing I'm going to go ahead and remove a bunch of the components from the inside of the gearbox so that you can get a clear view of what's going on with the trigger because uh, 
first of all, we're just going under the assumption that there's something wrong with this gearbox. We're pulling the trigger, nothing's working on it. We know the battery and the motor is good, so something is going on inside of it. Um, you have basically two potential problems. Is number one, uh, a stripped gear, or number two, something electronically is going on with the gun. Um, so you may want to, first of all, just do a visual inspection of all the gears and see, make sure that all of the teeth are intact. Uh, it's usually it's easy to see if something is missing. A lot of the time when there is a chipped tooth or a stripped out gear on it, it's pretty easy to tell that something's going wrong because you'll hear the motor humming and nothing's happening, so it's obvious that something is jammed in there. That's usually your first indication that there's something wrong with either a stripped out tooth on one of the gears, or a lot of the times you'll have a uh, missing tooth on your uh, piston. So if that's the case, check those components. If you're getting absolutely no sounds from the gun whatsoever, then it's probably an electrical problem, and what we're dealing with is a defective trigger switch. Now, as far as inspecting all the moving parts of the gun, it's important to pay attention to a couple of key areas. Number one, you want to check the teeth on the piston. Your sector gear makes contact with that and eventually will just wear it out. So just make sure that you're not missing any teeth and that the sector gear is able to make contact with the piston. Um, you also want to check the piston head. What I notice from a lot of guys that do uh, a great deal of dry firing, what happens is that piston head is getting slammed into the front of the piston until it eventually will crack or break off. So it's a good idea just for your own sake not to do a lot of dry firing because having that extra air pressure from having a BB in the chamber creates a certain amount of back pressure so that your piston isn't slamming home each time you pull the trigger. Um, so try to limit the amount of dry firing and your gun will last a lot longer for it. But just in general, check all of the surfaces as far as all of the teeth and just make sure that nothing's missing. It's usually pretty easy to tell if something missing from the gun. I have to say this is out of a G&G &G, uh, combat machine and just a, just a little thing for you guys to note, in the five years that we've been selling these I have yet to ever see a G&G &G gear come in with a, with a chipped or missing tooth on it. Um, we've seen other minor problems but just for whatever reason I suspect that these are very well made. Um, we almost, I should say, actually have actually never seen uh, one of the gears come in with a problem. One other little note for you is when you do remove the gears from the gun is make note of where all of the shims are on the gun if you're going to reassemble it because they're usually shimmed out pretty well from the factory so make sure all of those little washers go on the appropriate axle of the gear so that you have the correct shimming from your gun uh, when you go to put it back together. Now as far as the symptoms that sort of led us up to this point, what we were dealing with was a gun that you pulled the trigger and nothing happened. Of course there are other potential symptoms that you may be dealing with where say you're pulling the trigger and you have to pull the trigger all the way through its motion in order for it to make contact where some guns you only have to move the trigger a little bit. Or you may notice that the gun only fires intermittently or you may notice that the gun only fires fully automatic regardless of where the selector switch is, is placed. All of those are basic symptoms or potential symptoms of the same problem which is a bad trigger switch. Now before you get into just replacing the trigger switch it's a good idea to take a look at one part of the gearbox that causes the rear part of the contact. This is the part that moves. Some people call this the shuttle, some people call it the shoe, some people call it the male part of the trigger contact, whatever it is that you refer to it, there is a small tab, it's a part of the metal casting of the gearbox, that keeps that part from moving too far rearward. And this is just one of those things, as far as the design of a version 2 gearbox, that is a potential weak spot, that once that little part breaks, that little part of the casting breaks off, it doesn't matter what you do, but that trigger switch cannot be replaced because that is an essential part. So before you go too far, just make sure that there is that little pin still sticking up directly behind the trigger switch that keeps the contact from falling off the back of it. 
So in a worst case scenario where you find that that little tab is broken off, you really have two choices at that point, that you can either replace the entire gearbox shell, or if you want to be able to save the shell and go on from there, you can purchase the G&G ETU, which is their electronic trigger unit. This is a MOSFET trigger that retrofits the mechanical trigger. Now the nice thing about this is it has its own sort of self-contained micro switch that simply fits in into the existing space where the old switch went, the upside is that it does not require that tab in order to function properly. And I've got to say, I've got a box of busted uh, gearbox shells that have that broken tab on there, so it's a very common problem to have. So if you want to save yourself $20 to $50 on replacing the shell of the gearbox, this is a great solution to go to the uh, G&G ETU unit. Um, now that's a whole nother can of worms and we'll do another video on installing these, but just so you know, for your sake, if you do want to venture into that realm, um, that is a potential fix for this kind of problem. Cool. Now, because I did mention one potential symptom is the gun shooting fully automatic, regardless of whether it's in semi-automatic or fully automatic, wherever the selector switch is placed, the only potential causes for those problems are either, number one, on your sector gear, there is a teardrop-shaped portion, it's sort of a cam that presses against the cutoff lever, which is this part here. Um, I have seen cutoff levers broken, so it's good to make sure that the cutoff lever is intact and that it has the little uh, part that presses up against the trigger switch. The third part is the actual bottom of the shuttle or the male part of the contact. The cutoff lever presses up against your switch and causes it to return to its rearward position. So if your gun is only firing fully automatic, those are your three potential problems. Your sector gear, your cutoff switch, or your trigger switch. Usually, I have to say from my standpoint of repairing these a lot, the biggest problem is usually a worn out trigger switch. So that's usually the easiest thing to go ahead and replace in that case. Now, when it comes to replacing the trigger switch, you really have two options. Uh, number one is to just go ahead and replace the mechanism and just re-solder the wires back onto it. That's providing you have a soldering iron and you're comfortable with doing that. If you're not, then your other option is to just get a pre-wired harness and just drop this in. This is probably the easiest way to go, although I have to say it's probably twice as expensive to do this. Um, but for convenience sake, if you're not comfortable with uh, working with soldering irons or you just don't want to have the bother, um, you can go ahead and get the pre-wired harness. So that's the essentials for advanced troubleshooting for airsoft guns. And of course, we really just scratched the surface. There's a million other things that are definitely, you know, nuanced from one gun to the next that you'll probably encounter at some point or another. But essentially from my standpoint of the things that we see the most often are usually trigger switch issues and things like, you know, stripped out gears on pistons, stuff like that. So once you've got a handle on those basic uh, troubleshooting skills, you're covering about 90% of the potential problems that you'll have with an airsoft guns. There is a lot of fine tuning that a lot of people get into with doing shims and uh, putting the, the proper size shims on their gun. Um, and I could do a whole nother video on that and we're not even gonna bother touching on that. So just so long as you remember when you take the gun apart to put it back together in the same order and get all the correct parts in the correct order, you shouldn't have any major problems. Of course, if you do eventually get to the situation where you're completely lost and just don't know what to do, that's why you got places like this. Just bring your gun down here. We've got a full-time tech that'll be glad to take care of your gun. Or you could just do it the way I did and just watch a million YouTube videos and figure it out for yourself. It's up to you. So in the end, it was broken to begin with, and if it's still broken, well, you, nothing ventured, nothing lost. So you just look at it that way. So if you want to find out more, go to our website at replayairsoft.com or feel free to just stop by the showroom. We're open uh, pretty much all the time. So until the next time, don't let the bastards get you down.